were doing the rhyming games and the, you know, all those things, and you couldn't get that at all. But then sort of has it, but doesn't have it down pat. So you kind of gloss over it. How important is it to go back and have that really solid? It's pretty important. As opposed to just saying, ah, it's kind of good enough because everybody's way ahead. No, it's pretty important. What I would do if you suspect that a child's way behind, or behind it all with any of these strands is to have an assessment or some good assessments that we can do and just see how objectively how far behind they are. And if it's just, you know, they're 10% behind, that's one thing. But kids who really struggle with reading tend to be 60, 70, 80% behind. And that's at 12 years old, you can't afford that. Right. And, and, and so, but I mean, I know I'm his mom, so I know that his, his rhyming games aren't as strong as they were for the other kids. So is it what I guess my question is, is um, if you know that they're not, they're not solid, but you've kind of moved on and just let it go. But he's still, it. he's still struggling with reading. Oh, of course. Yeah. I'd go back and. And just keep working on it. Keep working on it on the side. Games, yep. Go back to that stuff. Okay. And there's some, there's some pretty, pretty yeah, um, there's some reading resources on the very last page. And I think Reading Rockets is, is one. Um, on that, and if it's not, readingrockets.org has a lot of good activities and and uh, yeah. games. It's on there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. So we're gonna go through pretty. Oh, we'll go backwards. Okay. So when we teach um, kids, if we're really teaching it explicitly in first grade, even in kindergarten, end of kindergarten, <coughs> we would teach kids le letters um, and the corresponding sounds. So this child would learn. This is the letter C, so he would say C. The key word that we associate with C is cat, and it makes the sound k. So child, I show him of this visual stimuli, he would go C, cat, k. And I would say, that's great. So he has, and this is where we really fall down as in, in teaching. So all of a sudden he gets C, cat, k, and he sees this word. And what, what is that word to him? Kitty, it, it has to be, right? Because we don't teach, we often don't teach or we don't spend enough time teaching C before I, E, or Y says S, okay? The hard sound is K, the soft sound is S. And kids, some kids, many kids can generalize that um, with very little instruction, if any, but many, many kids, 40% of kids who aren't reading at the basic reading level can't unless it's explicitly taught. So that's phonics. That's, that's our second strand. So there's a, there's a, you know, a generalization, a rule in English that says C before I, E, or Y says, just like G before I, I E, or Y says what? G, G as in gentle, Jim, uh, i.e., and gin. It's that time of day, I guess. <laughs> okay. Okay, next we have fluency. Now, this is a really, really important um, strand, and it's one that's way undertaught. Uh, I think they're all undertaught, but I don't think fluency is given nearly enough time. And fluency, again, is rate and accuracy. And we can say, Inflection is important too, but we, let's get rate and accuracy first. So we know that at any given month in a child's school schooling, let's, we'll keep it to elementary school, first through sixth grade say, we know that in the second year, second grade, third month, at the 50th percentile, a child should be reading X number of words correct per minute, okay? We know it for the 75th percentile, we know it for the 90th percentile, we know it for the 25th percentile. So we know where a child should be reading in terms of words per minute, words read correct per minute. Okay, and that's a really important benchmark that we have to look at repeatedly through the year to be sure that we're at level, that we're making adequate progress. And if we, we monitored at Groves um, weekly, Okay, so every Friday, the teachers give our monitoring. It takes one minute, each child one minute. And I think it's so important. I, I, I told the teachers, don't worry about, this is instructional. It, you know, it, it gives us a lot of data 
in order from which we make a decision. So if we see over the course of four or five weeks, we have our trend line, right? We know here, here's September, and here's June, and we know that we want this child to be here. That's their target line. And then every week we're monitoring. And if I see, or we see, four or five uh, weeks where we're below the trend line, then, then, then what do we need to do? We have to stop and say, what's going on? We're not, this child's not on target, and we have to figure out how to get him on target. Maybe that's more assessment. Maybe we haven't quite figured out where he's breaking down. Um, and then we have you know, four variables that we want to look at in instruction. One is, what are we offering for instruction? What's the program? Two is, how intense is that instruction? What's the class size? Three is, how frequently is that child getting the instruction? Right? Um, the child, let me go back to frequency. Um, or intensity. A, a class of my, my fourth grade daughter, Minneapolis Public School, has 39 kids in her class. <laughs> That's not a very intense uh, classroom setting, right? 39 kids, 39 kids in fourth grade. Um, so that's very, not very intense. You come to Groves and you have four kids in your reading group. That's pretty intense. What's the most intense situation you can have? One-on-one, -on -one, right? Tutoring. Um, frequency, how often is that happening? Is, it, is the reading instruction happening three times a week? Is that tutoring? Maybe the child's in the reading class and getting tutoring on the side. How often is that happening? And then the third or fourth variable is duration. How long does that intervention have to go on for in order to catch the child up? So when we're in here, we want to look at, is, the, is it the intervention? Is it the intensity of the intervention? Is it the frequency? Do we need to up it? Kids here who are really struggling in reading will get two doses of reading instruction in a, in a day. Okay, so we have to play with those variables. And fluency then becomes a really important measure because if a child's not reading with good rate and good accuracy, what's not, well, I'll guarantee you what's not going to happen? Comprehension. Comprehension. Because they're spending so much mental energy in pulling the printed word off the page they just don't have enough cognitive horsepower left. And it's not an IQ thing. I could give you a reading um, drill right now that would mirror what a dyslexic kid would read, and you would be upside down and sideways and wouldn't know where to begin to start with comprehension. So it has nothing to do with cognitive horsepower. It has everything to do with getting fluent and then getting vocabulary and comprehension on top of it. Well, um, because generally what's happening here is that, you know, there's a, a, a trend line rate that there, that's increasing each week the words that you need to read correct per minute. And a kid who's struggling, um, their rate doesn't keep up with what, where the trend line is. Okay, they, they start to slip. And a lot of these kids, I'll say too, that kids who struggle with reading, about 40% of them are also attention deficit. So that's why I say to our teachers here, give it four or five weeks because then you'll see consistent trend. If it's just one or two weeks, it could just be a bad day. You know, the, the squirrel could have been you know, outside with the acorn and you're gone, right? Um, so you, you have to just, you, you really want to be definite uh, in before you can really say that he's behind. And four, four data points is usually enough. And if he's behind four in a row, then again, you have to stop and... Yeah, well, that happens. I mean, kids, for a variety of reasons, as they move through reading, you know, reading isn't linear either in, in the difficulty of words. That If you don't have that really good foundation and, and good word attack skills and the automaticity with it, then you do start to fall back because this is being measured against your peers. 
And if you're not keeping up because you don't have that foundational skill, you will slip. Yep. We use Ames Web. Yep. And there's also something called Dibbles, D I B E L S. Um, so, fluency. So, you know, we do all this direct instruction, getting the kids to become fluent readers, but we can't stop with the direct instruction. Vocabulary is so key because if you